Hello everybody, welcome back to From Rhythm to Algorithm, Part 54, Astronomy Topics. Uh, this episode we will be talking about astronomy, clearly. Um, what I want to do is just review, uh, honestly, just a lot of structured things that you would learn in basic astrophysics classes. Um, just some thoughts, and I narrated this the other day, I hope you guys recorded that. But, I'm just going to go through... To everybody else, I'm reading the timestamps on Lex Friedman's podcast, and I'm just going to be responding to topics in astronomy that they're talking about. Um, what is the Oort cloud? So the Oort cloud is. So let's start with the evidence, right? If you go to school right now, they would say the you have the Kuiper belt, which is pretty far away, and then you have the Oort cloud, which is extremely far away. But the actual data is that you have long period comments, and you're not sure where they're originating from. Um, like I said, the Oort cloud could be real, um, it, the, the little icy bodies, the, we want to be able to detect them, but I, I'm just certain, again, there are no closed systems, momentum as a vector, right? You, if you go out into the wind, you can smell a flower from a f far away if it catches the right flow. I'm very c confident it's just, regardless of if there's an Oort cloud or just a bunch of icy bodies just throughout space that aren't detected because of their size or they don't radiate enough or whatever, I'm sure those are, that's everywhere in the solar system and, and intergalactically. Uh, obviously less intergalactically, but there's par particulate comets, asteroids everywhere. Um, life in the interstellar medium, are, are there aliens out there uh, in the Oort cloud, in the icy bodies, what exactly um, conditions be, w would be required for any sort of biology. G like I said, I'm genuinely certain biology would be locally similar, but past that, the, the forms will be the same, right? De regardless of what type of material your body's made out of, your like I said, you'll still have cephalization, head, appendages, um, probably eyeballs for most sentient species. Um, but are they, could they ad adapt in very cold climates? I would think so. Like I said, I think you just look at terrestrial life, everything on Earth. You would go to hot thermal vents, and there's there's bacteria and stuff. So, bacterial life in, in a very cold environment, maybe, maybe not. I mean, that could be right. There's just no. But are there aliens out there? Yes, we'll talk more about aliens after I get through the astronomy topics. How unique is Earth? Again, I keep saying locally similar, meaning like water's the solvent for most things on this planet. I say most because I, I don't know if it's all or not, but like the solvents could be different. I have no real way to gauge or data point that. Strictly off of biological intuition, I, I, would, I would suspect that it does vary, but again, the function would not vary. Again, how the body processes and metabolism would all be very similar. Um, how uh, did, did Jupiter did Jupiter destroy early planets? Literally everything that has an accretion disk destroyed smaller bodies, 100%. Earth, the, the moon itself, I mean, any size of body is going to aggregate smaller bodies for sure. So yes, Jupiter certainly did, did destroy early planets. How hard is it to simulate the universe? I mean, this, like I said, this is a very good directive for, like, computer science or just more generally translation or processing in general, right? You can't have an engine that's 100% efficient. You can't, more generally, you can't have output rates exceeding the input rates, right? It takes a lot longer time to develop a, a video game than to play the video game. Um, so there should be some way to you can find limits to that about relative size, and they, they also talked about the three body problem. Um, and we, we should I guess we should be able to address that substantially better again with relative mass, defining the boundary of the system again with momentum. Um, I'm not going to try to solve the three body problem right now. I'm just getting getting through these topics. Um, but for simulation, right? How how and they talk and they talk about how useful is it to simulate the early universe? I actually disagreed with Constantine. Batijin, Batijin, I don't know, sorry if I butchered your name. My Russian probably sucks, I don't practice it at all. But, what was he? He, he, he said that he didn't think that the, sim, like the simulation 
uh, of literally the physical evolution of our solar system would be that insightful. I disagree, not severely, meaning like the data right now is more important certainly, but would we have some sort of insight of, about physical and biological evolution if we knew, if we could simulate, meaning model it on a computer to very, very great precision? Yes, that would certainly be beneficial. Can we? No. How close and how much can we resolve any given measurement? Again, some, some limit of input and output. Um, right, using your intuition from physics, an engine can't be 100% efficient. The origin of life everywhere, again, probably, again, probably bacteria floating around and then just sentient life developing until they get technology and then once you get technology you fly around and you meet up with other people, other individuals. Um, will it be possible to simulate the full history of the solar system? Absolutely fuck no. And just, just my intuition when they were talking about this is they don't even get, how, and I don't get like how, how, much, how much data that would be. Um, so to say the entire universe, again, let's just talk about the solar system. Could you simulate the solar system? Way infinitely too much data. Where are the limits? That, that's where I would say is the concentration for computer science, the, the main research direction for re computer science is processing limits. Um, like physically. Um, the origin of life, like again, the evolution will be similar. Evidence of Planet Nine. I'm heavily against Planet Nine. The Oort cloud, like I said, conceptually, I just wasn't convinced either at school nor because for everyone watching, I actually did go to school for astrophysics and I was actually in graduate school. And then I tried to turn in this paper and people were like, "Oh, like I was actually in graduate school for physics," <laughs> but. I didn't, uh, I was not, when I was at school, the Oort cloud, again, was not a convincing argument. Planet Nine, to me, is kind of nonsense. Meaning, I don't think, at, and I, I, there's a, I would say 90% confidence, there's no chance to have um, something severely out of orbit with the plane of the other planets, as we've already watched, right? All the other planets get pretty coplanar. I don't think... Planet, I think Planet Nine is the concentric circles instead of the ellipses for orbits of today. Um, so I don't know. Or cloud could be not really, not a big problem with that. Planet Nine kind of have a problem with that. Um, could, how, how about this? When will we find Planet Nine? Never. <laughs> like I could be wrong, it's a 10% chance, it's certainly not negligible. But that just, that just seems like again, uh, misunderstanding of the Harry Ball theorem and momentum slingshotting a random comet once or twice as opposed to, you know, assuming another planet. And I said I'm certain there's, there's debris in space that you just can't detect. Um, commercial, could Planet Nine be a primordial black hole? No. Um, yeah, no, that's just no. I forget the exact conversation at that point, but black holes have to like the like the, the core is small, but primordial black hole. I just didn't like that conversation at all. Commercial space revolution boosts science and the human condition, solving sex in space. Um, I'm certain that if you can if you can manipulate like flying around gravity like the UFOs do right now, then you can certainly mimic gravity within your ship. So if you if you if the direct question has a very short clip, but it was like. If the question is, is could a civilization confidently build a ship and go travel long distances or like leave their planet and, and reproduce for a substantial amount of time? Yes. Um, would they, though? Like I said, you might, you might have some species out there that have really gone to different places, but I think no, no one's going to want to travel that much. Um, so I think that would be more out of necessity. But, and I think that's what they were trying to get at. Would humans evolve if we couldn't see the stars? Again, nothing interesting for me to say there. Military funding and science. Is it a Mua Mua space junk from a distant alien civilization? I actually did like Constantine Batigens. He said like a like a hydrogen jet thing. That that sounded interesting to me. Again, the thing's so far away, we're not gonna get definitive. It's, that's that's not and could it be alien? Sure, is that Relevant to my analysis, zero. Again, I'm not doing analysis. We have data, <laughs> um, but 
Uh, I don't care if it's aliens or space junk. I actually thought the nitrogen or the whatever the icicle explanation was pretty interesting. Wild ideas create the future. Imagination. It, imagination is conjecture, 100% of the time. And that's, you, that's you filtering languages. Um, the perfect place to die. Oh, this is okay. That's and that's the rest of the astronomy topics. So that's what I just wanted to cover. Again, nothing super interesting, but this is just structured astronomy. And I'm very confident that the long period comments are just redirections from momentum. Um, now let's just talk about extending our, one of our proofs and more aliens and UFO and liquid technology. So right, remember we said a faggot, a vec no baguettes, a faggot with no baguettes is a fag, a gay person, a loser with no jewelry. But a cigarette is a fag. Prove me wrong. Right? <laughs> but it's not. A slang extension. A cigarette, the, the thing you smoke, is a fag, is a bundle of sticks. No. A cigarette is a derivative of a fag. And I, I didn't pick the answers, but that's true. <laughs> um, and, and logically consistent, right? People call cigarettes in America cigarettes, they call them fags in England. So that's an extension to our slang proof. And now, more, more on... <laughs> I don't know. More on aliens and UFO and liquid technology. Are sentient alien beings here for sure 100%? The only question that I'm not exactly, I would say, could an, could an alien species walk down the street and not be noticed? And I say that again in direct reference to 2013, Prime Minister of Canada was in the, the House Senate on the floor saying this stuff. His words, not mine. But the real question of biology and astronomy is again how locally similar would spatial evolution be? Um, and if so, if, if an alien could walk down the street, uh, they would, I think they would have to be from our solar system. They would have, they would have had to live on one of these other planets or Jupiter's moon and then, and then flop around in the ocean. Um, but I, I, said, I think there's, there, no, yeah, I think there's morphologically similar aliens, if I had to really, you know, I would say 85%, but there's certainly alien, a lot of alien species. And, but like I said, different UFOs, the shapes are not consistent, they all make noise. I'm certainly confident of liquid technology. Preserving signals, right, when you go, like I said, go look at a, uh, an old movie, just an older movie, and look at them filming the sun, right? They'll be focusing the camera and you'll see like circles like this all through the frame coming from the sun. And I'm certain these are exact representations of the, the information being transmitted. So somehow, somehow liquid preserves like light or preserves the momentum within light. So how about like a liquid core? Spaceship? I don't know, but certainly for signal preservation and signal sending, the, the, the phase of matter of liquid is definitely very interesting. Um, like I said, pretty con certainly alien species, certainly UFOs. Again, as, as, as striking to me in biology as noticing a worm on the, on the road or a floor. There are, there are animals in the woods and there are... are fucking aliens in space and in the water. And at this point, I'm very con I, I know that the, there, there's probably a lot, of, a lot of interesting whales out there, but the, the reason that the U.S. Navy gave the report and not the U.S. Air Force is because these UFOs aggregate in the oceans. Very, very confident. And I'm very confident also that the, the, the mapping, or not the mapping, the, the cloaking is just, like, again, I mean, we're kind of close, right? If you can have some sensor here that takes this information and just emits it over there, you don't see a difference. And so, I'm sure it's not, I don't think like the cloaking technology would be too far away from what we have right now. The engines, yes. How, how, how to do the acceleration. I, I, think, I think some sort of circular motion with liquid, if I had to bet money right now, Brad, build it right now, that's what I would try to do. Um, and again, that's, again, not, to me, alien, like, the fact that there's been, again, the U.S. Navy saying for years, let's just ignore, the, ignore these things, again, it's just slowing down science so fast. 
<laughs> and just and just for everybody else watching, I've had I've had two or three of my neighbors come up to me in person and talk about this very not coded. So this isn't me guessing. This is me talking <laughs> to my family when I'm telling you that I'm interacting with people. Like I'm talking literally in person. My neighbors come up and tell me they're professors and they were watching my YouTube channel. So. Uh, a lot of headaches. Still, still get trying to move. I have to move now. Um, so I'll still, I'll still be doing videos and stuff. But I really just want a time frame, man. I just stop going down and move and flip flopping around and getting insulted and shit, man. But that's what I have for from rhythm to algorithm part fifty four astronomy topics. Thanks for watching.